Christy. She is in Canada. She will be back
I am going to give you a quick um, uh, Old Testament history. History lesson. Uh, so that's that, but just please, uh, it's setting the stage for Isaiah. Setting the stage for Isaiah. I'm going to go through this very quickly. And so what God did is God called Abraham uh, to the promised land. And so Abraham and Sarah and Isaac and then um, Isaac and then Jacob. Jacob had uh, 12 sons. Then it was Jacob's family that eventually went to Egypt. And they were in, in Egypt for uh, 400 years plus. And then God delivered his people out of Egypt um, and brought them uh, across the Red Sea into Mount Sinai. And that's where God gave the covenants, the Ten Commandments, uh, and, uh, and, and, and a lot of the ceremonial laws. They, uh, they grumbled and complained, so God had the, the, the children of Israel stay in the, uh, in the wilderness for 40 years. It was at the end of Moses' life where he died and Joshua became the new leader. Joshua uh, led Israel across the Jordan River into the Promised Land. They defeated the Canaanite, the Amalekite, the Perizzites for seven years. There was a seven-year uh, divine war in the Promised Land. After that, the, the, the uh, not the uh, 12 tribes of Israel, but the 11 of them got various land allotments. And so, uh, uh, two and a half tribes were east of the Jordan River, and the others were on the west of the Jordan River. The one tribe, the, Le the tribe of Levi, uh, were the priests. And so they did not get a, 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 an allotment of land. So, you've got um, the 12 different allotments, or I should say 11 different allotments of land. Jerusalem was technically part of the uh, the, the capital, if you will. The temple has not been built yet. Um, during the time of the judges, uh, they did evil. The, the judge uh, was the basically the leader in the land. Um, we think of Samson as one of the judges. Ty, uh, during these times, uh, Israel followed the the uh, pagan gods of the land, and uh, all of a sudden the people wanted a king. And God said, well, you, are you sure on this? Because the king is going to uh, insult taxes and burden. Yes, we want a king like the other nations. We don't like, we don't like these judges. So God kind of gave it to the people, and the first king was Saul. And he was good at first, but then he turned to the dark side <laughs> and um, uh, even sought wisdom for the witch of Endor. In the end, Saul killed himself by falling on his own sword so that the Philistines would, would not uh, defeat him. David is the second king. David comes along and he wants to build a, a temple. But God says, no, uh, one of your children will build, build the temple. After David is Solomon. And Solomon uh, was the one who, who built the temple. And the days of Solomon, I will say, I call the glory days. You couldn't get any better uh, than the days of Solomon. And those are the days. And so you had, he, he, he uh, conquered all the lands. He had you know, a lot of money. The, the temple was covered in gold, there was peace in the land, and you couldn't ask for anything better. But, unfortunately, Solomon uh, gave in to sexual temptation. He married a lot of wives, and then he, he bought into their idol gods, and then Solomon went downhill, unfortunately. Then the kingdom was divided. I'm leading up to now, between the north and the south. The north was Israel, and the south was Judah. Of 
okay? And I think Rehoboam was in the north, and then Solomon was in the south, and then they had all these different kings. Uh, the temple was set up in, in the south, in Jerusalem, and the north said, no, we don't like, we don't want to go to, we don't want to go to Jerusalem. No, we don't want to go to the temple there. We want, to, we, we want our own temple. Well, you got to split between the north and the south. Then uh, God sent the prophets to, uh, to, um, to call them to repentance. Now, so here I am leading up to class. Isaiah is preaching to the north and the south. And, um, so, he's calling the north and the south to repentance, to repent of their sins. The north, God had the Assyrians come in 722 B.C., they had Assyria come and take the north Israel captive in 722 BC. And then God in his 587, Babylon came and took the south, Judah, into captivity. The north is no more. Uh, they kind of merged in with Assyria, and that, that's why in the New Testament, um, the Canaanite woman or people from the north are despised because they're, they're half Israel and they're half Assyria. And so anyways, they, they are no more. Uh, they're mixed in with Assyria. Assyria. Now, the south... We, you have a remnant that was taken to Babylon, and they were there for 70 years. Isaiah warns against the north going into captivity, and warns against the south going into captivity. You're going to go into captivity by Babylon, okay? And Jeremiah is, we're going to do that next, but Jeremiah is ministering to the south when Babylon comes. And, and Jeremiah is eventually taken to Egypt and he dies there. So Jeremiah is the prophet who actually sees the prophecy fulfilled. Isaiah is, is talking about these two, but never sees them fulfilled. Isaiah is talking about 200 years of prophecy. Okay, So his time, what he's talking about is within 200 years. And so... Isaiah, so, um, yeah, you got that. Now, after 70 years, then uh, God has I was just trying to keep, uh, keep a, uh, come back to Jerusalem, and that's where you have Zerubbabel and some of the minor prophets talk about coming back to Jerusalem and rebuilding what's called the Second Temple. The first temple, by the way, was destroyed by, the, by, uh, by Babylon, 587. Uh, and then they come back and rebuild it. The second temple is the temple that Jesus sees, okay, because the first temple is destroyed. Um, and then you've got from Malachi to, Ma to, to the birth of Christ, um, I believe it was full of years. Uh, and during that time, there is no, there's no prophet, there's no king, and you've got, uh, it's called the intertestamental time, between the last prophet Malachi and then the birth of Christ. And so you've got that, that time in this world. All right. Now, that is, I'm setting the stage, okay, so that's a quick Old Testament history. Um, any questions about... Quick Old Testament history. Any questions on that? You get it? Okay. Now, one other thing I want to draw. And this is my this is my favorite. Get rid of this one here. I'll go like this. 
This is my favorite illustration. Now, if you get to know me, you know this favorite illustration. So, um, Christ is the center of the scriptures. He is the heart and center of the scriptures. And if you don't know who Christ is, you don't understand the scriptures. You just don't understand the scriptures. So, uh, who is he and why he came and the benefits of the cross and resurrection, that is vitally, vitally important. So, the Old Testament is always pointing forward to the coming Christ. Uh, okay, class. What's Pastor Wilmer's favorite Bible passage? Yes, Genesis three fifteen. It's the very okay, it's the very first uh, promise of the God of, of the gospel. It's the very first promise of His Savior, and where God says to the serpent, there will be enmity between you and the woman, between her seed and your seed. He, namely the Savior, is going to crush your head, Satan. But in this enmity, this battle, he is, uh, and he's going to bru- uh, 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 you will bruise uh, his heel. What that means is that uh, Jesus will defeat the devil. But in this battle, Jesus is going to be bruised or injured, or what we will say, crucified. Okay, and he's going to be born of a woman, and what we know as the Virgin Mary, and. Um, and Jesus also will be both God and man. He's going to be man because he's going to be born of a woman. But he's also going to be divine because he's going to defeat this enemy, the devil. Now, how are the uh, people in the Old Testament saved by faith? Sorry, class. I have terrible handwriting. They're saved by faith in the coming Savior. They're saved by faith in the Savior. They're not saved by works. They're not saved by covenant. They're not saved in the amen. They're saved by faith in the coming Savior. So I would say, I don't think Cain, Cain believed in the coming Savior. Abel did, you see. Um, Abraham believed in the coming Savior. And you've got uh, an unbelief uh, that does not. So, okay. And in the New Testament, look back to the Savior who already came. We're saved by faith in Christ. Salvation is through faith in Christ. No. Isaiah. Now I want to get to Isaiah. When we go through the book of Isaiah, it's not going to be chronological. Uh, he, uh, uh, Isaiah suffers from AD. AD. He's scatterbrained. No, he is going. Uh, Uh, this is the last day of Judgment Day. We don't know what's going to come. Okay. Uh, he is going to. He's going to talk about 587 when the Babylonians are coming. He's going to talk about the birth of Christ. He's going to talk about the death of Christ. He's going to talk about the New Testament church. He's going to talk about the Gentiles coming to the New Testament, and he's going to talk about this last day. And he jumps all over the place. Okay, so the times when he's uh, he's writing, by the way, Isaiah takes place before and after six hundred, and then I'll get to the days a little later. But he's going to jump all the way, and he's talking about this, and then he's going to talk about the birth of Christ, and then he's going to talk about the church, the New Testament church. So. I, I want to give you this big picture is what I'm doing, okay? I'm setting the stage for the big picture in the book of, in the book of Isaiah. And so I want you to understand that we're going to, when we, um, that he's going to jump all over the place. Um, he's going to talk about the last day, judgment day. He's going to talk about the New Testament church, the Gentiles, the nations coming to the New Testament. He's going to talk a lot about Jesus. And um, I'll talk more about that later. He is, uh, the book of Isaiah is quoted in the New Testament more than any other book. Really more than any Old Testament book. The book of Isaiah is quoted in the New Testament more than any other Old Testament book. So, um, Isaiah 53 is, is just beautiful. That is just beautiful. If it was ever, I'll get to that later. So, 
Um, there you got it. All right. Any questions so far? All righty. By the way, you guys know my second page. Oh, that was it. It's a New Testament. Uh, uh, it's uh, Romans 4.25. Uh, he was taken up for our transgression and raised for our justification. Uh, the reason I like this one. He was uh, given up for our transgressions and raised for our justification. The point is, it mentions Good Friday and Easter in the same verse. In the same verse, it mentions Good Friday and Easter. Good Friday, he was crucified for our transgressions, and then it mentions Easter, he's raised for our justification. Now, uh, there's two articles that are dear to my heart. It's Christology and justification. Oh, I just love Christology. Uh, I love talking about Christ. And uh, the flip side of the point of that is justification, the forgiveness of sins. Wonderful. Just absolutely beautiful and wonderful. Now, um, Isaiah. Okay, should a, should a teacher check his cell phone during class? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I got a Snapchat update from one of my grandchildren. I um, I am going to give in to the temptation and <laughs> don't tell him this to me. Pastor Wilmer checks his uh, Snapchat. <laughs> okay, you guys want to see it or hear it? One of my twins, girl. She's crawling. So I tell Brianna that I'm showing this little glass. <laughs> Alright, there it is. So, um, they send pictures, and it's gone. It's, it's God, you can't go back to it. I have to hurt the seat. Press and pull to replay. So I press and pull to replay. <laughs> All right. So I've got grandparents, Snapchat. I've got cute twins pictures. I've got Wilmer cousins. I've got um, group me is another one that, we, that they use. So anyways, um, my son Joshua has twins. They're in Kansas. Stephanie has Luke. She's in Kansas. Bethany is due next month in September. Uh, so, and then Jacob and I will have their first in October. I miss anybody? Uh, Jacob and Grace are on vacation now. They have Micah. Micah is now learning to crawl stairs. He's crawling and uh, he's crawling. So that was the close phrase. Uh, all right. Yeah, David and Bethany are at the seminary. Yeah. All righty. We're going to start with the introduction to Isaiah. You got your worksheets? Got your worksheets? Um, obviously, the first question is Isaiah is the author. The reason I mentioned that, I mean, it's an easy, it's an easy answer. But the reason I mention that is because the critics, uh, the critics will say that there are two authors or three authors. Don't listen to the critics. Now, I had mentioned to you that uh, the, there is a break in the book of Isaiah between 1 to 39 and 40. 40 starts. Comfort, comfort ye my people, speaking things thus saith the Lord. Lord. Beautiful hymn. 40 starts off uh, the word so comfort. Anyways, there's a break. So people will say there were two authors. You can also divide Isaiah into three different sections. They'll say there's three different authors. This is what the critics want. This is what the critics say. That the Bible was not from God, that it was made up 
by people, um, and they used other sources. That's what that's what uh, the critics will say. Um, I should uh, I should give you another one of my. Uh, the Bible is unified lectures, <laughs> and um, the Bible. Do you remember I had the uh, the diagram up between uh, the Old Testament, and the New Testament, Christ and the Son? The Bible is all unified and centering on Christ. And you, you, uh, oh, the span of history, the number of books, and the number of people have a common theme. How in the world can you have a book that is over um, a thousand years old with 66 different authors and a different time spans? The unique thing, why does it have a common theme? Because God has his hand in writing the Bible. God has his hand in writing the Bible. The critics will make make um, make people think that it's a human book only. It's a human book only. And it is not. It is it is from God. It is our only source of truth. It, uh, from the Bible, we learn about how the world was created. We learn about the fall and the sin. We learn about the Savior getting to rescue us from sin and, and all that. So uh, the author is one author, and that's Isaiah. And God had inspired Isaiah to, to, to put down in writing the book of Isaiah. So that, that's why. Next one, question two. What's the date of Isaiah 740 to, to 681? Now, You remember I mentioned 722. And remember I mentioned 587. Um, 722 is when Assyria came and took, and took the north. Notice it's exactly what Isaiah was prophesying about. And it came, it was fulfilled during Isaiah's time. In the Old Testament, your numbers go downhill. 740 to 681. Now, was Isaiah alive when Babylon took the southern kingdom, Judah? No, he was not. You see that? Jeremiah was. Jeremiah was present. So your dates uh, are there. Some of our uh, minor prophets, by the way, we're going to get into the minor prophets uh, next semester. Some of the minor prophets overlap with Isaiah, by the way. And I, there's like two or three of them. I can't remember which one they are off the top of my head. But uh, there are some um, minor prophets that overlap with Isaiah. All right, those are the dates. Number three, the purpose. To comfort God's people with the gospel. you got to write that down. Write that down, Jesus. To comfort God's people with the gospel. Now, uh, it's gonna, that's going to be on the test for sure. Right? Um, so, on the test, I do ask the dates. Now, um, notice the word comfort. The word comfort is from chapter 40. Comfort, comfort, ye my people, speaking peace, thus saith our God. Now, so, comfort God's people with what? The gospel. Comfort them with the gospel. The good news of Zion's redemption. The good news of um, Zion is an old. By the way, okay, so I'm gonna, we're going to talk a lot about in Isaiah the word Zion. Zion is an Old Testament term for, term for God's people of the Old Testament. Church. It is a New Testament term for God's people. Let me say that again. We are going to come across the word Zion a lot. It's Old Testament. We do not use the word Zion in the New Testament. It's God's people, the New Testament people. The so just that way out of it. Um, so to comfort God's people with the good news of Zion's redemption, I just summarize that as the gospel. All right. Uh, you could also say a call him to repentance. I mean, he does call the people to repentance. Now, list some uh, famous Christological passages. 714, 
9. Now, I want to talk about these. 714 is a promise uh, that Mary will give birth to a, a virgin will give birth to a son. 714, a virgin will give birth to a son. Mary gave birth to Jesus. The virgin birth of Christ is mentioned by Isaiah in 714. Chapter 9, you know chapter 9 from uh, Christmas, Christmas programs. And he'll be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. That's Isaiah 9. He'll be called Wonderful Counselor, Everlasting Father, what, what is it again? Uh, 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 that's uh, that's uh, chapter 9. Now, chapter 53, this is the heart of life. This is Good Friday. This, 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 uh, chapter 53 is on Good Friday. Uh, that's the Old Testament reading for Good Friday. Beautiful chapter. Just absolutely categorically beautiful. Uh, this is the best chapter. I mean, all these are good. The birth of Christ, uh, Christ's ministry, and then his death. And resurrection, by the way. Isaiah 53 talks about his resurrection. So, these are some, these are, I could mention uh, some other passages, but these are uh, a few of them. Moving on, next one, question five. Why is the book of Isaiah called the fifth gospel? Because it prophesies so often about the coming Messiah. It prophesies or talks about the coming Messiah. It so often talks about or prophesies of the coming Messiah. Okay? It is... Um, now, when you say fifth gospel, what I mean is this. We know that there are four gospels in the New Testament, right? Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Uh, we call Isaiah the fifth gospel because it is, we could say, it's the gospel. It's the book of, book of the gospel in the Old Testament. It's the book of the gospel in the Old Testament. It, it talks about Jesus uh, a lot. And we're going we're gonna to see that. Uh, and therefore, Isaiah is a beautiful, beautiful book. So, um, that, any question on the introduction? Any question on the introduction? Um, we've got eight minutes. We're gonna uh, we're gonna get into the book of Isaiah right now. Uh, Daniel, your Bible to Isaiah one. Bibles, Isaiah one. Everybody, Isaiah one. And uh, a teach and, and eventually, I want you guys to learn about it. Let's see if she has Everybody got a Bible? Isaiah 1. Okay. Uh, I will give you these answers. So, but um, Danny, um, let me read verse 1 and you, you, can, you can find the answer. The vision of Isaiah, the son of Amos. Which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. So, Danny, uh, prove that God supernaturally revealed these things to Isaiah. What one word is mentioned in, in verse 1? Vision. Right. That's the answer to your question 1. God provided what's to be revealed to Isaiah. How? In a vision. Next one, Jason um, lists the four kings of Judah. What are they in verse 1? Yeah, Uz Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah. you got to write those four down in question number 7. Now, Ahaz, we're going to learn about Ahaz uh, quite a bit. He's, he's the, uh, well, Hezekiah is a good king, and the others are bad kings. Who's, uh, uh, we'll learn about these kings later on, but please make note that this, it sets a historical context. Because these four kings are mentioned, it sets a historical context. I'm not going to get into Amos, the father of Isaiah, but just please make note. All right, question number eight, David. What did Judah do wrong? Um, 
Yeah, uh, look at the end of verse 2. But they have rebelled against me, says the Lord. They have uh, rebelled against the Lord. Look at verse 3. The ox knows its owner, the donkey its master, master's crib. But Israel does not know does not know, basically know me, the Lord says. My people do not understand. And God is lamenting over this fact that they don't know me. They have rebelled against me. So we can see the wickedness here. Next one, a slave. Question number nine. How is Judah described in verse four? Yes. Sinful, evil, corrupt. Uh, they've forsaken the Lord. They've despised him. Uh, question number 10. Um, in verse, what is God called in verses 4 and 9? In verse 4, he's called the Holy One and the Lord of Hosts. Yeah, the Holy One of Israel and then the Lord of Hosts. Uh, these are titles of God. Notice there's one God, he's holy, and he is the God of Israel. Or you could say the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's the God of Israel. In, uh, in verse 9, he's called the Lord of hosts. Um, so, and I can talk more on that title, but please make note of that. Next one. Lance. Question 11. According to verses 11 to 13, what was wrong with their worship practices? Yeah, I'll uh, summarize that. Basically, not done in faith. Their worship practices were not done in faith. And let me show you that. Uh, let me read verse 11. Follow along with verse 11. Uh, what to me is the multitude of your sacrifices? In other words, God's saying, I don't care about your sacrifices because they're not done in faith. Look, and moving on. Um, I have had enough of burnt offerings, of rams, and fat, and well beasts. I did not delight in the blood of bulls or lambs or but why? It's because they're not done in faith. They are mechanically doing these things with no faith. And that's what uh, God is concerned about. Um, okay, we're going to stop here. I want you to answer chapters... Um, well, finish one. We got to do four a day, but uh, answer through through chapter five. And if you can't find the answer, don't worry about it. Just skip it and move on. Uh, answer question one to five, and that's it. So, thank you very much. Uh, goodbye. We're we'll getting to see you tomorrow.